Well, canceling so many events has really hurt a lot of our local musicians and gig workers. We were trying to speak with musician John Cleary earlier this morning about this. I think we have him now. You know, we're all working this out over video conference. Hi, John. Thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to hear from you. We know that Jazz Fest is now officially canceled until next year. This is hurting so many local musicians because they're losing a lot of work. Yes, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Jazz Fest itself constitutes a small part of the, uh, of the workload for musicians at that time of year. You know, most of our uh, work is at the clubs and all the peripheral stuff that happens around Jazz Festival. So when they cancel Jazz Festival, it's not just our one Jazz Festival show, it's two weeks of sometimes three gigs a day. Sure. It, it's just really messing up the culture and the vibe. But of course, this is all for a greater cause, social distancing, so that we can try to stop this pandemic. But I'm sure that it's really hurtful, not only to musicians economically, but also just kind of their sense of spirit, because this is how you guys contribute to our culture. Well, we all look forward to it. It's fun. It's a bit of a roller coaster, Jazz Fest. You know, it gets kind of crazy. Lots of rehearsals and lots of good music getting made at that time. Um, but, you know, it makes perfect sense, given the, the state of affairs, not to have loads of people congregating together. It seems a little premature to cancel it this early, but I think uh, ultimately it's, it's for the common good, obviously, it makes a lot of sense. Sure, they're trying to be extra careful. Well, I understand that you're doing your part to kind of help the local musicians who are hurting. Tell us about this online music festival you're taking part in. Um, well, there are several online things that are happening. This particular one, I think, is to raise money through the Jazz and Heritage Foundation, if I'm correct. Um, that's one of the things we're doing. And then, um, like a lot of other musicians in town, we're doing, I'm doing streaming um, broadcasts on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from my studio at home, um, which gets the music out there, not just to New Orleanians, but to people as far away as New Zealand and Argentina and uh, remote parts of Europe. So the, music, the musicians keep playing. It doesn't really matter what happens. Uh, we still do keep doing what we do. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool thing. You guys have found a way to do what you do, even in these circumstances. I also see you pouring some drinks in there. What do you drink when you're performing? Well, we call it the quarantini hour. So ah. there's like a cocktail de jour or de nuit. But one of the ones we do sometimes is early in the five o'clock in the morning to go out to Australia, our fans in Australia, which is a bit too early even for a New Orleans musician. Yes, I'm sure it is. <laughs> so, well, that's, so I drink cups of coffee out of a martini glass. Very nice. Well, I'm <laughs> glad you found a way to keep it going and try to help our local musicians who are hurting. We'll be watching your online music concerts. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Thank you very much, Chief. All right, hang in there. We'll